in here. And uh, as promised, I am making Christmas tree skirts. And I said skirts, didn't I? <laughs> well, I started one, got an idea for a design for that, and I started another. And I said, wait a minute, let's, let's do the easy one for everybody to watch so they don't get overwhelmed. But I'm going to show you the other one in a minute. Um, for a 36 inch diameter, 36 inches across uh, Christmas tree skirt, you need one yard of fabric. It can be 44 inch, 45 inch. If you want it bigger than 36 across, you need to get the 60 inch or 54 inch wide material. And I will explain why in just a second. I did a little diagram for y'all, so, because I know sometimes when I'm explaining things and I'm actually doing it, it's kind of hard to follow my hands. So, it's rudimentary. It's not, it's not my normal artwork. I have artwork all around me that I've done, but this is not my, this is just, this is real quick instructions, <laughs> sketching. So, with your one yard, <laughs> to make your Christmas tree skirt, you have your fabric and you have, the selvages on both sides, you know, you open it up from the bolt. So you have a selvage on either side. So what you're going to do with that is you're going to fold it back to where it's as if it's on the bolt, but with the right sides together. Always right sides together. Then you're going to take that piece, that's the selvages folded together, and here it is folded together. You're going to fold it down in half from the top to the bottom, exactly in half, okay? Then once you've done that, you're going to cut the piece that's folded. You're, and you start from the side that has the double folds. And then your raw edges, your selvage edges are over here. So you make a little semicircle cut there. And this is where I have down here. The semicircle cut is where the folds are. You have two folds there. And these are your four edges, your selvages. And then you're going to do the big arch, the bottom part of the skirt, from all the way across that way. If you do it the wrong way, you end up with two pieces, and then you have to sew them together. And that's what I did the first time. I forgot I was supposed to cut from the fold side. So, But that's okay. Even if you make a mistake, you can still fix it. And the way you fix it is... When you cut, make your seams, when you're sewing them together, put some little cute ribbon on that seam, make it real decorative, top stitch it with a real pretty uh, coordinating color of thread. And uh, that's what I intend to do with, with one of the boo-boos that I made. <laughs> so now here's the visual. That's the little instructions. Now I'm going to give you the actual visual. This is my top fabric that I'm using. It's not, it's Christmassy, but it's not Christmassy. You know what I mean? There's no Santa Claus on there. There's no snowflakes, but it's pine cones and it's holly and it's berries and it's, uh, what are those? These little variegated uh, leafy things. So, and there's gold and green and red on it. So, yeah, it is Christmassy, okay? So, this is. Put it up on the floor. Oh, it's a bag. I don't want knock on the floor. Okay, this is the. This is probably a little bit more than a yard, and I saw this in my stash. Yes, I have a stash. You can never have enough fabric, by the way. And just so you can see it better, I'm going to set. This is one yard, and it is the 44, 45 inch wide. So on the bolt, it's like this, right side out. You're going to take that one yard, and you're going to fold it right sides together. Okay? You're going to do this for the two layers. You're going to do it for the top. Uh, layer and for the bottom layer. This is going to be the bottom layer for this particular one. I may change my mind. I may put something different on the back of this. I'd love to have a big gold piece, but I'll show you the one I am making. Uh, the very first one I cut. Now we have a small tree, a small artificial tree and a regular tree that we put in the corner, like the seven foot one. So the small one, I'm, that's what the other skirts for. It's for the little one. It's about three and a half feet tall, I think. So you, okay, so just like in the instructions, you're folding this in half, selvage edges. Now they're, they can't, they could really use a pressing. I usually like to press my fabric before I start doing all this folding and stuff, but it's a Christmas tree skirt and it really doesn't need it. As long as it's, you know, crisp off the bolt, you really don't have a lot. I just don't like when the selvages curl up on the edge, but they get cut. 
they pretty much get cut off anyway. So then you're going to take that same piece that's folded in half, you're going to fold it in half again, but you're going to fold it in half from top to bottom. Okay? Top to bottom. And that's why I don't like the wrinkled corners <laughs> or wrinkled edges. It drives me crazy. Now, see, and I practiced this several different times on a little piece, and that's what I want to show you. This Christmas tree skirt can be so many things. Um, the ladies, if you ever went to a sock hop, remember the, cir uh, the circle skirts, the poodle skirts, or a circle skirt, right? That's what this is, basically. So if you have a, if you have to have a pattern, get your circle skirt pattern out, and you can make your Christmas tree skirt using that. It's the exact same thing. I could take this and make a skirt out of it. I have to make me a circle skirt in heartbeat. I just have to make sure that the waist is big enough. Well, my waist is smaller now, but it's it's not as small as this is going to be. Now, you can have an opening at the base um, where this wraps around your tree six or eight inches. To do that, you're going to come down either three inches or four inches when you go to make the top semicircle. And I'm going to show you how to do it without using a curved edge. A lot of people, what they'll do, and this is really a neat way to do it, Take a CD, okay, for the top part, and you just lay it out there. I actually, I'm going to do this. <laughs> I'm going to, to make a nice, neat, good semicircle top. And that way, it's, it's even, you know. The bottom is a little tricky, but it's not difficult. I'm sure you've seen um, some gals online where they uh, use a pencil and a string, and they, put, put the, they hold the string at the point. And they have the pencil at the end, and then they do this like a protractor. You ever, remember using protractors in geometry in school way back when? Well, yeah, that's basically what that is. Well, I always have problems with that darn string moving as it either stretches or it goes pops out of my hand when I stick it. So I don't use that anymore. I use my handy dandy ruler, my clear ruler. That's what I'm going to use. So what I was saying is this, look, you can do it mini, do it mini size. And, my goodness, you can make candlestick uh, pads, I call it, this thing sticks to me, look at this, it's like spiders, to put under your candlesticks. And they will match your Christmas tree skirt, like if you have your tree in like your dining area, like we did with ours, and I even started cutting some. Look at these, this is this cute? And all I have to do is put a little slit there. And make it like I make the tree skirt, which you do right sides together, sew it, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. And then when you turn it right side out, now you've got a little. It's like a, it's like a candle coaster. You can actually make coasters. Just don't cut the circle out in the middle. You want to make Christmas uh, coasters? Do the same thing on a small scale with the scraps of what you're already using. That way you don't waste any fabric. I love the whole idea of not wasting any material. And not throwing away any, any pieces that I, I could actually use to make something. And it's the same way um, when we were kids growing up in the kitchen. We used leftovers like they were the first thing out of the box. Uh, we didn't care. Um, when you grow up and not having a lot of money and this and that, you know, you make food stretch. Especially when you got five kids. And there were five of those kids growing up in the same house. And it's like, there's, there's another one. And the really neat thing about that is, if you have two candlesticks and then you have a centerpiece, oh my goodness, make one for your centerpiece. Just make it bigger. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? That's a, that's a, uh, it's about 12 or 15 inches across. I forgot to measure, but I think it's about 15 inches. But that, plus this fabric, you could even make it look, you can do so many different things. And make your table just so festive. And now I'm giving you all kind of crafty ideas. And, and But they're all done on the sewing machine, okay? They're all done on the sewing machine. And this is a red felt. Um, and that's to keep it from slipping around. Um, that's why I'm kind of rethinking this one. Because I think I mentioned before. I have a crazy cat. She's a tuxedo. And she likes to slide into home base. And she uses the Christmas tree skirt as her place to slide. But we're not putting it out in the living room this year. We're putting it in the dining room in the corner in the window. And I think maybe she won't slide into it. But then again, you never know. Luna's a nut. Okay, so we folded her. As I kind of get off the subject there, we folded it in half. Like it was on the bolt, only right sides together. And then we folded it in half one more time. Now, I'm trying to remember. 
I digress. If I do. Now I could do it that way. But I better do it the way I know. <laughs> the reason why I said if you want a wider skirt on your Christmas tree skirt to get 54 or 60 inch um, fabric, wide fabric, is because of this is how you measure your diameter using your ruler. If you have a yardstick, which is 36 inches long, or a meter stick, which is 39 inches, that would make it so you couldn't make it bigger than what this goes. Now, I will, I'm going to, I folded it in half, and I'm going to see how far this will go. And I've got 18 inches. Basically, I can get, as long as I don't, run, see, the, you got to watch too. The edge is not, the edge on this is not even. If you have a cotton blend fabric, do you know how to make your edge a straight line? Make it perfectly even without using a rotary cutter? You rip it along the grain. And you're probably thinking, rip it? Well, if you've never done it, it's very therapeutic. It makes the coolest sound. I love doing this. So I'm going to do it. <laughs> I love do it, ripping along the grain. So you look for this, the low spot. You know, where it kind of like, or it's not, wasn't cut. This was not cut even, evenly. And you compare the two edges. And it looks like this side has the lower spot. And you can see how it dips down. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scissors and start some trouble. <laughs> so I'm going to, on each end, because I want both ends to be straight, I'm going to, and you can, you can eyeball it, or you can take, actually take the, the ruler and make yourself a little mark so you know where you want to start this. You take your ruler and you put it, lay it on that low spot, okay? And of course, because of these wrinkles in here, it's not going to lay. It should. But I'm going to start on the one side that's it's got the low spot. I mean, this one's got a low spot. So that's why you end up with a little less than a yard. And that's why I'm saying sometimes you don't. And blah. I had, there it is. So you can mark it where you're going to make it. You're just going to make a snip, like a one or two inch snip. So you think it started. So I'm going to put that line there. And make my little line snip down here. Because you want to have enough to grab onto. Okay. This is the sound I love. And then you take that piece and you just go like this. Now what that's doing is it is only tearing along the, the fibers. And the fibers are all woven individually, horizontally, and vertically and then it stopped at a point which tells me it's even more <laughs> uneven than I thought because now it's got this bump right there so now I have to go to this low spot on the other side and do it again it's do it again because I want a straight edge because when you're measuring your your uh, your circumference your semicircle you have to have a straight edge at the bottom and some people will go ahead and put this on the uh, um, their cutter. They'll have something that cuts a straight line. And that's all well and good, but that takes the fun out of it. So I do it the old school way. When they taught us how to do that, I was like, you can do that with material? That is so cool. And I, yes, I do it all the time. See, and that one's not quite going to cooperate because it's really, really close. So I can just, where I drew my line, just cut along the line, nice and straight, and then go over to the other side, and get that, that side that's really, there we go, <laughs> that's the best sound, yeah, now I have a perfectly, I mean I know it's, it's wrinkled from yanking at it, but it's perfectly straight, this is straight, it's with the grain, with the horizontal grain, not the vertical grain. So then I'm going to do the same thing on the other end. And let's see which, which side has the lower or lower of the two. This one side is really, really low. 
it's like it's got a real deep valley and I believe it's this side over here it's another reason why it's a good idea to press it ahead of time I didn't do that this time because I thought well I didn't know I was going to have to even it up but you almost always have to so here's this one so let's put our little line there and get that started I drew it a little bit longer because it's really thin and you want to be able to have something and get your fingers to hold it, you know, can hold. So, I want to make sure that, because otherwise it's just going to fall apart in your fingers. So, I'm going to get it far enough down where it starts to give you something to grab. And then rip away. Well, that was short, short lived. That means it's really close. There we go. Because so I don't want to take too much away from the yardage. So that's why you kind of have to be careful of the low spots. And now see the other. They really cut this really crooked. I'm not very happy about that. So I'm losing about, mm, about a good half inch all the way around. Quarter inch on each other, either end. You'll see what I mean when I cut this one. You get an e get an even straight edge. I lost that much material, but this is important. It's you're going to lose that a little bit. Um, uh, if it's unless I cut it extremely bad, you're only going to lose maybe an inch, and this is about an inch total. So let me do that. I'm going to fold that back and. Know why this is going off? I do apologize for that. <laughs> All right. So now we have our yard with straight edges on both ends. I'm going to fold that back down and then I'm going to show you how to get your circumference and you do this for the top layer like I said and also for the bottom layer so go like that and if for some reason I end up with two pieces instead of one that's okay because we're going to put them together anyhow so but I tested this as I had it been a while I hadn't made one in a long time and uh so i was like you know i made a new skirt have you ever noticed the ones in the store they all look alike they all look alike they either go all out on the antique kind of look with the muted or the the uh old tiny colors i call them like that that old dark kind of burgundy reddish color that's not a christmas color christmas colors are christmas red it's a bright red it's a cheery red it's a lovely red there next time I will press this out but anyhow I know that this part at the bottom is going to be cut away so I'm not really concerned but I'm going to try to maximize on every little inch on here so now you're going to take from your point remember I said you've got the folds two folds on top this is your raw edge this is your selvage edge so when you folded it from selvages are here folds are here top to bottom this is what you get okay you're going to measure as far down this top side as you can to see how wide you can make your circumference if it's too short when you after you cut it and you lay it out and you go oh i want it to be wider the piece you cut off make sure that you don't disturb it sometimes i will put pins in this so it stays together you can cut a strip or even two strips of it and as long as you continue with that same curve when you go to pin it to the main piece in order to make it wider it will lay flat i did that i had where'd you go puppy pee pee where did that baby go? 
I think it's it over there. This the one? No, that's the one I'm using for this one. I have one that I cut, and for that very reason, yeah, this is it. It wasn't wide enough for me. I wanted it bigger. <laughs> so what I did was, did I bring it out here? This looked like it. I think I may have stuck it somewhere else. <laughs> I don't see it. But anyway, I did that on the bottom. I actually added three inches to it. Oh wait, it's underneath this one. No, I'm sorry. I've got like three of them going here at the same time. So, so that you can see. See, here's, I'm going to cut this out. I got this, but it was only from here to here. That way. And I added four more inches to it, which will be about three and a quarter when I seam it. And when you are when you do that, when you do those strips, you want to think of bias tape. And when it, what I mean by that is when you cut the extra strips, put them right sides together and right sides together and cut a diagonal cut. So that way when you stitch that diagonal cut and you open it up, it stays going around in a circle. Geometry. <laughs> but that one is a, it's a about 40 inches, I think, is what it ended up being across. That's a nice size. Now, to cover up that seam, I will use ribbon to cover it up. I'm probably going to use red ribbon on that. Um, I may even use it on this one. I thought about gold, though. And I have a roll of gold ribbon somewhere. It's disappeared. <laughs> so you take your the piece that you have folded from top to bottom, four selvages, uh, loose edges here, and your two fold edges is here. You go down the side, both sides being the top fold and the side folds. The one that has the two. You go down as far as you can before you run out of material. And you want to make sure when you do that that all those layers actually are meeting each other. And these are not. So and, uh, if you don't, you end up with this really weird shape circle that's not really a circle. So you want to make sure that you get a good circle out of it to match up these seam. This is what I say about some people. I know when I first started making these when I was younger, I actually would pin them because I didn't want the fabric to move around. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. So I've got that unfolded, basically. And this is where I really should have ironed it, to tell you the truth. Because one selvage is a little bit thicker nearly. That's okay. I may press it yet. <laughs> Did I put my ironing board up? No, it's over there. Anyway, I'm going to bring them together. And sometimes the fibers stretch over time, um, either from the way they're put on the bolt in the store or whatever. And you want to make sure that your folds and your edges, this is where I go, kind of like a laundry. <laughs> And it usually shakes it into where it's supposed to go. Yeah, much better. The white part doesn't matter because it gets cut off anyway. But it's the, the colored part of the green. So then you go and measure down the top fold side. This is 18 inches. This is wide enough that I can get 20 inches out of this. That's going to be great because that's 40 inches across. That's a nice size tree skirt. I didn't know it. It, it just depends on how you, how you cut it. And uh, so I'm trying to think. This should be just about right. So I'm going to mark that at the, that's under there. I'm going to mark it right there. 21 inches minus the, the seam is going to make it a 40 inch skirt. You're going to do about a three-quarter inch uh, seam. So, so you put a mark there. Okay. Then you do the same thing on the side that has the two folds. Now, if it comes up shorter, then you know 
you're not going to have a 40 inch skirt. Remember how I told you when we had to take the extra off the end? That sometimes one side's going to be longer than the other. And that's the exact case in this one. So this is actually a exact 18 inches is where this side ends up. So I have to go back and adjust this to 18. Why? So that it will be a circle and not an oval. You don't want an oval skirt. If you want an oval skirt, well then, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> but um, it looks kind of weird. So 18 inches. So now I have to come back here and do, because this is exactly 18 inches long, this ruler. And mark it at 18. I'm losing, I can't believe I'm losing three inches, but that's okay. I can use this for other things. I can use it for the little coasters. And that sort of thing. Okay, so I've got one mark at the bottom on either side. Now I'm going to go down the center. Now the way to do the center is I keep the point of the ruler here. And I kind of lay it this way. And you can tell if it's even on either side. It really doesn't make that big of a difference. But you're just going to put a mark there. Then you're going to act like this is on a string. And you're going to go like this. Keeping that point to point. Make another line. I do about every three inches or so. Whatever is your comfort zone as far as that goes. A lot of people are for fear of they cannot draw a straight line. And I'm going to show you how to draw a straight line. Everybody can draw a straight line. And you guys like, no, I can't. Yes, you can. It's a um, brain trick, actually. And I had a, my art teacher in middle school showed me how to do that. I love Miss Kay. She was wonderful. She, she kept a lot of my artwork, though. That I wasn't crazy about. <laughs> I didn't get to bring any home. She, took, she put them in a showcase in the school. I guess she liked my stuff that much. So then you keep doing that until you come back around to your starting point okay now you're going to draw a straight line but you're going to draw it in a curve you have to not watch where the pen is coming from you need to watch where you want it to go so in other words you focus your eyes on where you're bringing it to you're going to bring it to you and it works every time i didn't think i thought my art teacher was crazy no nope, it, it works so I first look where I've got from point to put it, start it, and then I'm focusing on this mark here. And I'm just going to bring the pen to it. It's running off the fabric. It just doesn't want to do it. So I'm going to do the opposite way. <laughs> Sometimes that happens with the ink. You know, probably do it and it would be all right. So I did not lift the pen and I did not look where where I was I did not look for it to come to me I looked for it was but I had to make it neat where my eyes were so it's like no you got to come where I am and you'll be it's pretty uh pretty darn accurate I did not use any kind of dinner plate or anything like that and I have a nice semicircle I mean if you train it's like you're looking here and you're telling your brain is saying, okay, hand, come meet me. And it makes a perfect line every time. So at this point is where we cut our semicircle. Now you can cut the top first or the bottom first. I'm going to cut the bottom first. Sometimes I'll do the top first. I'm just going to cut it right on the line that you just drew all the way around. Just like this. This might be a gift for somebody when I finish it. I don't know. I am in a giving mood. I, every Christmas I do a little contest. And this year is no different. This year, instead of telling me your stranger stories, last year it was to tell me a story about when you did a kindness for a stranger and how it turned out. Did they reciprocate? Did Were you surprised at how they reacted? Were they surprised about you giving them you know, something out of the kindness of your heart? And the stories that I received were so heartwarming. And I did share. 
I shared them anonymously. I did ask permission first before I shared them. And oh, God, I had to have tissues, guys. I had to have tissues when I read them. So this bottom piece. Now, I know myself, if nothing else, this is great for put, using in, in a quilt, for, for cutting pieces out for a quilt. Um, because it's got the green, you know, you make a Christmas quilt. I actually have one in the works, but it's not, not a Christmas quilt. It's more of like a Thanksgiving quilt. It has, uh, acorns and a green background and then just plain green. So it's like the two fabrics together. Um, and it's just blocks, um, to block it up. So I like to keep it intact. The way you can do it is you kind of like can fold it up and then this little strip that you ripped off. Just tie it around there, put a little note on it, it's like, you know, scrap or whatever. If you if it's got a yardage to it, sometimes you'll have like a half a yard left. You can do that. But this is how you keep your remnants in order. Keep them in nice little bundles like that. And, uh, you know, I'll measure it later to say like it, it's like the biggest spot is going to be like three inches by six inches and that sort of thing. Um, so that you know just what you're getting into when you open it up. Now the top, like I said, I hadn't done this in a while. I'm going to use the disc. <laughs> I'm going to use the disc. And I'm just going to, what I do is I'll, I'll take the ruler and see how far down i got to put it, like three inches, okay? And so it's one, two. So I want a six inch circumference circle for this, the uh, around the tree. So it's one, two, three. It makes six. Three on that side and then three on the other side and then I'm going to place the disc on there at that point. Let's see, one, two, and three. And that way it'll be a nice semicircle. You just lay it on there on either side of those little dots. You get your three inch thing, make your line, trace around it. These are little, little hacks, tricks, whatever you want to call them, that you figure out how to do over the years. I've actually before I I use a saucer from a cup and sa a cup and saucer set. That's what what I would use before they came out with those things. And we didn't have those growing up. We had platter. We had the uh, vinyl. And you could use a 45, but it was awful big. And the uh, sweep of it was the curve of it was like way too deep. So we're gonna cut cut this out from here. Now the uh, reason why I said about having a fold here and folds here. If you have a raw, if you cut this and there's a raw edge on either end, you're going to end up with two pieces and you'll have to sew, stitch them together. If you keep it folded, it's going to, no, you're not, you're going to have a circle. You're actually going to open this up. That's a half circle. And then pull this back. Can't wait. And now you have a whole circle. See that? So that's why I did the diagram so I wouldn't mess you guys up. And that's how you do the coasters, the placement. You can do round placemats. And just don't cut the top out. That's it. That's how you get a perfect circle. Okay, now this, what I'm going to do is because... You don't want to have to sit the trunk down in the middle without this being <laughs> able to be open. Now, you can do one of two things. You can cut all the way down, which is what I'm going to do with this one, and then stitch the front to the back, and I'll explain why. Or you can cut halfway down or five or six inches down, and then just do like this. But most people like to just kind of wrap it around, so it's best to just put a slit down the whole side. So that's what I'm going to do. Cause that's why it's, that's a good thing when you don't iron it because there's a crease right there and you just cut along the crease. You don't have to measure anything. You don't have to draw any lines. You just cut along it like this. Okay. There's that. There's it. Using the disc, it made a little bit of a point, so I'm just going to cut the point off on that one side. But there's a reason. When you're matching up the top part, 
Now once you have your bottom cut out, you're going to put your top on it, right sides together, openings together. So this is going to go this way. And I have the one that's for the smaller tree that I'm going to show you right this way. And one circle is bigger than the other, and I did that on purpose. You're probably thinking, aren't they supposed to be the same size? They should be. They don't have to be. So I'm anxious to see how this one works out, whether one's going to be bigger than the other or not. Let's see. And you want to make sure that your neck, I call it the neckline, it's not a shirt, but the neckline part that goes around the tree, that it is flush with both, both fabrics. And I lost my tomato. I lost my pin, tomato pin. I had it with me. Well, I have pins. Not to worry. I always keep, always keep a stash somewhere. I did have it in my own. I must have left it in my other room. So you're going to pin it around the neckline, so to speak. And that's going to be flush and even. Do not panic if the bottom, for whatever reason, Maybe because this is, might be one inch wider than the other material that from the bolt size. But if it's one is longer than the other, then you end up with a nice little edging. You know, I'll show you what I'm talking about. If I brought it in here, I better, yeah, it's right behind me to show you what I mean. And I've cut it on purpose that way because I wanted the smaller skirt to have that little edging without having to sew a ribbon on it or anything like that just by using the bottom material as to uh, accomplish that goal. Well, when you stitch around this part, just like if you were doing a neckline, you want to snip it every like three quarters of an inch or whatever so that when you go to turn it right side out, that it gives that little bit of stretchability and will lay flat for you. And there we go, like this. And over this way. Okay. So you're going to need this part. And this is the first part that you stitch because we're going to play with the rest of it. First, we're going to see if one turned out to be deeper than the other. The way you tell that is when you come down the side. You're not going to sew the side shut just yet. Now you do that kind of last-ish. Do not fret if it turns out it's a little bit wider. That's okay too. See like this? When I came back this way, I was like, well, guess what? The green one is a little bit wider, so it's not gonna match up on the edge, but we're gonna we're gonna fool it into thinking it is. And it's gonna get a lovely edging for that reason. So one side will have an edging on it, and that will be the one that you let you lap over. Um, you can put a button on it for closure if you like. You can even, some people will put in like a little drawstring. You can do that. Which, if I was going to do drawstring, I'd do it in the sense of a, like a, a green ribbon or something. And I have some green ribbons, as a matter of fact. That's a good idea. So you just pin this all the way around. Of course, you're going to say this one is a little bit wider, and so it doesn't quite make it to the edge. See, it's a good, that's how much I lost on the bottom. But that's okay, and I'll explain that in short order. And we'll go to doing the side seams. Yep, don't you stick me? I'm going to go ahead and stitch this 
around and I'm going to do it probably about a half inch instead of five eighths just to give it a little bit more give uh, in the sense of being able to wrap around the tree trunk as, as you when you're not cutting straight this way and you're cutting kind of on angles it gives some that believe it or not even though this is not a stretch fabric it does um, give a, a stretch effect and it will actually make it look like it's sort of stretching in the sense it is it's just the fibers uh, giving with the new the new position there oh, it's not even all right so we're going to take this put this little guy over here and go above oops i forgot to plug it in thought i had like oh that's right I, I moved it from one spot of the room to the other and i forgot i had moved it all right see that See which plug is the closest, and I think it's this one back here. Yeah, it's like right here. Fortunately, this room has a lot of electrical outlets. It really does have a good selection to choose from. Okay. However, yeah, I knew you were gonna do that. I gotta. I'm actually gonna move it this way because that the cord. If the cord was over here, it'd be fine. But it's not. It always happens that way, right? I do not want to drop this. I just got this little machine from a friend of mine, and uh, she said she couldn't figure it out. She couldn't figure out how to use it. And I go, what? I can't figure it out. And I said it had to come with a manual, but I don't know what she did with the manual because <laughs> she didn't give it to me. <laughs> and I don't have it. Okay, there we go. All right. This is, I love doing weddings and Christmas stuff are my favorites. I don't know about you guys. Alrighty, now we're going to do the, I call it the neckline of the skirt. And I'm going to do it from the side that I started with where it's, you know, I've got them even together. Alright, I'm going to start from that side. And get that down there. You can see, right, I did not thread this yet. I was deciding on colors and I brought this thread out here and now I feel sorry because I did didn't bring it out here oh it's in the basket I know I brought the basket out oh the baskets are great especially when you got to move your uh, operations from one room to the other and then uh, it's a, I think it's a, it's a, yeah I already put the thread in there and the bobbin and uh so i'll i have several different spots that i like to sew at and i'm like um what room am i gonna sew in today and so i decide like okay i need my basket i have several baskets that i keep different things in i keep all of my trims for projects in one and getting really really crazy organized which is fun and can be aggravating at the same time because i had some gold Ribbon I wanted to actually put on one of these and I'll find it or it will find me eventually. I do have some veils to whip on too, so. I love this machine because my eyes get a rest. It actually has a needle threader. <laughs> Those are the best inventions I ever made for old ladies like me whose eyesight is going kaput. There we go. And put the needle down. And go to town, as they say. But not too fast, because you want to be able to go around the curve. Not too fast. That way, when you go to snip it, you're not like totally messing things up. And that's the. This little machine's got some get up and go. She likes to go. <laughs> now I'm 
it's kind of stitching kind of fast, but for you that are beginners and want to tackle something like this, it's really easy. Um, this is about the speed I, I would suggest for you. It's like just barely touch the pedal so you can go ahead and guide it through just like that. And you get end up with a more even seam line also. You gonna take the tail with you? You need to stop that. I'm gonna take the tail. I'm start with it. <laughs> My daughter wouldn't. She never liked to watch me sew because of that. I'm gonna sew through your fingers. Why not? And it takes a lot of talent to sew through your own fingers. Although it's been done, I was in high school and a girl did that. She sewed right through her finger, right through her index finger. You do want to be careful. Okay, now get to the end there. Just like that. And that's the neckline is done. I'm just going to cut out, give myself a good five inches thread at the end there. I took the little thing off. There it is. Forgot to put it back on. Okay. Now we're going to take these pins out. And then we're going to put them on top of this so I can see them. I don't have my magnet out here for this. But there it's so I can see them on there. Pins on there. Then I'm going to go around and snip a little, just a little V snip down to the stitching, not into the stitching, just to the stitching. So that when this gets opened up, when it's finished being sewn from inside, it will lay flat. Like that. Da, 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 da. Make sure you get them all out. I'll know if I didn't because I will pick myself. Okay. There's your seam. Okay. And then you just take and wherever it's really curved, you just kind of snip. Snip. I do a little V. Let me see. Y'all can see this. Okay, so there's a little V right there. Okay. And do that about every, hmm, depending on how curvy it is, about every inch or so. If it's not so curvy, you don't have to have as many because it won't need as much stretch. And that, this one was kind of an interesting curve. <laughs> and it came out like that. And like that. I got some of the spots are real curvy. It's only because I use that that disc, and then parts of it are going to be curvier than others. And it comes out because it's a gradual curve compared to if you used a, uh, a protractor kind of measure thing. I never thought I would ever have to do that since I got out of school. And Geometry class is over, but nope. Sewing has a lot of geometry in it. And I couldn't stand geometry, but I love sewing. So I guess I kind of like geometry after all. I learned how important it was in sewing. So I'm just doing these because it's it is a more gradual curve as you go around. It's about every two inches or so. Some people will just go like an a diagonal line. I do the little V's because I found over the years that when you do the little V, like you, when you mark for a, a the um, what do you call uh, what do I call those things? The little notches um, for matching up so that you make sure that your underarm seam matches up and that sort of thing. The notches that you cut out to to connect one part of the of a garment to another it's the same thing except this gives you the benefit of it's going to the, the neckline will stretch nice for you all right now what you're going to do next is you're going to see if it met if it meets at the bottom and you see there's a little bit of a what a little bit of a overhang of the one material. 
And then this one, of course, is like crazy on the other side. So I can do one of two things. I can go ahead and stitch this bottom like this, which is what I'm going to do because I have an ulterior motive. Stitch it flush. Okay, stitch the bottom flush and stitch the one side flush. Leave one side open. The side that has that extra, that extra piece, you know, the extra width that's, that's, that's wider than this is, has that extra three inches up, leave that end open and you'll see why. You have to have one end open to open it up. Like this. This is the fun part. When I figured out some really cool creative stuff. Oh my goodness. It's a ball. You can serge your edges if you like. You don't need to because it's all going to be on the inside. I normally would. But I don't have time. on one end of this but then it gradually gets bigger so what you want to do to get the full benefit of what I'm going to do is sorry about that you're gonna lay it flat okay and let it lay flat hello then you're going to bring up that bottom and make them together flush you're going to do that all the way across. And I just put pin the first few to get it started. And then I'm, as I feed it through the sewing machine, then I will just make sure that the two edges meet. And you will see why and what it does. Because it's going to do the exact same kind of thing as the little gold and red one I told you about for the small, smaller tree skirt. So I'm glad this turned out this way. What this does is it saves you from having to get the bias tape binding or even making it. Bias tape binding is not hard to make. You're cutting on the diagonal. That's what the bias means. And in this manner, you don't have to do that. It kind of makes your uh, binding for you in one fell swoop. Except a whole lot neater. And I want to make sure that it gets the full effect here. I should probably call this my magic uh, binding skirt or something. Stitching the top part around what I call the neckline um, forces the bottom to do this little trick. I'm going to show you that it does. Now you could do the same thing conversely as they say. Start at the bottom and then do the top last and it would have the same effect but on the top instead of the bottom. I prefer on the bottom because that's, you see more of that. You don't see the top so much. Mm -hmm. And she can move when she wants to. 
Yes, you can. Just uh, call her Lady Kenmore. Hmm. Yeah, I'm one of those silly old ladies that names your sewing machines. <laughs> Have a Duchess too. <laughs> this is Lady Kenmore. And Duchess is in On sabbatical. We had a viewer, I'm guessing a subscriber, who asked about this little item. As I told, I, t I, may, I, I told you guys, if you don't say Christmas tree, I wasn't gonna make it. You can thank Mr. Frank. Thank you, Mr. Frank, for asking for Christmas tree. <laughs> Here you go, honey. <laughs> how big this circumference is until you actually have to sew it. Now another thing I normally would do with these cottons, knowing that I'm not going to start it, is when you cut it out, cut it out with pink, pinking shears. I love my pinking shears and I use them very much. So that's not all girly stuff, and I do like making other types of clothing. I am going to show you how to make a man set. Actually, not set. A pair. A pair of cargo pants. Men's cargo pants. Yeah, I make those. Mm -hmm. I can't see spending $60 on a pair of pants that I can make. I don't know about you, but no. My husband loves them, and he likes the cargo shorts, so I'm going to make him pants and shorts. Interesting. <laughs> that was really neat. Very, very interesting. That there's no. Oh, I'm kind of excited. I'm very excited. <laughs> just doing what it's doing. Come here, baby. There you go. With that even you up. I'm going to lock in your stitches at the end, always. Now, here comes the neat part. We're going to turn this right side out now, okay? And I'm still going to need this, but I'm going to turn this to the side. Oh, I'm sorry, babe. I'm mean, sorry. I mean to smush your face there. <laughs> turn it right side out. The whole thing. I put my arm all the way through here. Now, as I get to this corner on this side, get those pins out that I have pinned it with, like that, and the corner, so it comes out a point, I'm going to cut across it just like that, okay? That's why I made a narrow seam also, is it's, it allows you to have that nice little point. 
when you pull it out. So turn it this way. And da -da -da -da. Oh, look at this. This is ooh, pretty. It's pretty, pretty. I like that little glittery thing. My son hates glitter. He calls it uh, fairy dander or something like that. <laughs> it's just kind of funny. So I have my little point on this end. Somewhere's. Where are y'all? It's coming. <laughs> Yeah, I mess with it a little bit, not too much. It'll 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 make its way out. One of these fabrics is a little bit stiffer than the other one. With the glitter is a little bit stiffer, so if you match it up with a soft fabric, it's really cool. It does exactly what you want it to do. Believe it or not. Now, I'm gonna get my hand back in there. Get that turned out. There you go. Uh, Looks like a big broken donut. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to show you a little trick: finger pressing, because you don't always people don't always have a tailor's ham. I actually had one finally after all these years. I was able to get a hold of one. I tried to make one and they were terrible. So you take your finger. Well, I use my thumbnail and I just kind of run it across the stitches on the outside, so that you don't have this puckery look. It just kind of irons it out without pressing it and having creases all over it. It's, it's better to do it. Another thing you can use too is there's a um, darning plate that's used to you can use that, put that on there where you can carefully use the edge of your scissors. You don't have fingernails to do it with. So your scissors will do the same effect. And it takes, it's just like as if you were you ironed it with an iron. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that. Because I have something to do to show why I chose to let it be an uneven cut. Because it's going to give a very nice use with them, effect. Now, you should do a, re a pressing with an iron at, at the very end, definitely. So where I finger pressed it along the bottom, bottom of the curve, you go back to the neckline, and do the same thing on the outside, up there. You need it to lay flat to get your, your piece to lay. Like this. Because this is where you would take your iron and press it. Okay. I'm going to bring, I guess I'm going to bring that iron over here. Move this here. And actually put the little, I have one of those tabletop ironing boards that comes in handy. And go like this. Because when you do it with the iron, after you've done the finger press part at the top, you get a little surprise. I think you've, pro you've probably already figured it out, haven't you? You know, you figured it out, didn't you? You know exactly what's going to happen, don't you? Well, you see, you're smart. I know you know what, you know. You, you may be some of the beginners and stuff like that, but you, you figure things out. Not everybody is geometry challenged like myself. <laughs> Not so much anymore because I got forced into it by the stuff that I love. So, and that's when we'll take care of that last opening edge. And that's... So I'm taking my fingers on the inside and outside to do the neck to give that a good finger press inside and out. And iron, you couldn't do this with an iron. There is a wooden, it's almost like a tongue depressor kind of thing that you use in quilting. You can use that for this. That's perfect for this actually. It's very perfect for it. Let me go around the other side of the neckline. Grab that out. That's got to come out that corner. Mm -hmm. Got some speed demons outside my house. You hear them rubbing in and mm -hmm. like that. Okay. See how nice 
point that comes out. The point comes out really nice that way. Okay. That way. I've got to grab it this way. All right. Now you can embellish this this edge, and I think I may just do that because I do have some really cute um, quarter inch ribbon. I have it in the green, and then I have some. Where's the red? So the red. Since there's not a whole lot of red in it, I'm going to lean towards the red because the red will look nice against the green on the back side. So let me grab that iron over here. Ironing board. I uh, made a new cover for it out of some batting and an old sheet. The iron likes to spit water once in a while, and that's why it has the water stains. So, I'm going to take this like that. And you start from the neck and go down. You do not worry about the open end. We're going to take care of that in a minute. And you know, there's like pins like, hey, you gotta show the other end. Not right, yet, yeah, it's okay. Oh wait, I can't let you see the secret. No. <laughs> you can't see the secret yet. Okay. I'm gonna move this guy, make sure he gets hot. He likes to cool off on me. And I'm gonna get a good steam press on this. So you start at the top of the neck, make sure that it's nice and even. You have to do a little, little more pressing with your fingers, that's that's fine. And then this is a hint. And just smooth it down. Smooth that baby down. To, to that bottom. Yeah, I know, hon. You need to be moved every so often. That's one of those safety features. And do it like this. Okay. Just like this. Makes for an interesting edge on the on that side. And press this. Alright, ready? Here we go. Now you can, if you don't want it to have this special look, I love it because it makes it unique. It makes it different. It makes it, you know, you can't, it doesn't look like a mistake because it really isn't. I mean, I did this like this on purpose twice now <laughs> because it, it looks, to me, it looks very cool and it's definitely something very, very unique. And you can put batting in your uh, tree skirt if you like um, to give it some body some people will do that they have a batting now that has an adhesive backing to it that stuff is wonderful for something like this because you put it on the one side before you sew them together and then it adheres to it and it stays put so that makes a very nice uh, skirt now this one is actually probably going to have a little bit of a trim added to it in the end when all said and done for the mere fact that because of this little extra tidbit <laughs> that I let it do by itself it's going to need a little bit of length and that's great because I can go crazy with that I can put red lace on it if I want to or gold I mean any color that's in your your fabric you know, the, the print hat, if you're doing a print in a solid or whatever, would be beautiful on it. Now, if it does turn out where it's kind of, you know, uneven at the end, like this was, you can always trim it and then just sew it like normal. I like to see what I can do with things that turn out like that. And I'm always pleasantly surprised, it seems. And we'll do this next line here. Ooh, steaming up the glasses. <laughs> I get a facial every day lately. 
I don't even know. Listen to it. Listen to that iron growling. <laughs> now what? It looks like it's all nice and even right now, doesn't it? I mean, you don't. It's like pressing out just nice. Nice and flat like that. And wait till we look at the back side and make sure because you want to keep an eye on the wrinkles and all that good stuff. So I typically end up having to iron both the front and the back. doesn't matter you know what it is because you don't see the back until you get to the back and uh, it might feel smooth on top but you know it may have some wrinkles in the back we'll see in a minute what we have because right now we got all this beautiful floral kind of design going on and it's just so pretty that the neckline I keep calling it neckline. I, was not, I should call it the trunk line because that's where the trunk goes. <laughs> I miss having a real tree though. But when you have certain animals who like to climb trees or the feline version, yeah, you don't really want to have a real tree around. They like to climb the artificial ones too. So they don't know the difference. They just see, oh, tree, time to climb. And then, of course, the one is silly. She likes to slide into home base. She thinks she's playing baseball. She'd be a great shortstop. You should see her catch cat treats. <laughs> and there's the dad. Ah, lovely. So I'm holding the neckline as I pull down to press the bottom. The hem. I'm pressing the hem. Yeah. And down there. I'm get you to do your thing, honey bunch. There we go. Now this way. I'm going to turn my head so I don't get a facial. I <laughs> don't need no steam facial, did I? I've had my fill. Oh boy, look at this. It's great. I mean, I have a, I have a couple different tree skirts. And I was like, eh, something different. I don't know if I'll keep this one. I mean, you know, I've got two more I'm making. <laughs> okay. Now, this is the main side. The other side, all green? Not exactly. Look, it has a binding nail. Isn't that awesome? And it's the top fabric that's doing it. It's because it was longer than the underside. Then you just kind of go through and fix the wrinkles out. <laughs> There you do. Be careful of glitter embedded material because just like satin, it gets hot to the touch. <laughs> and I get another steam face. Steam a uh, facial. But the other one, the one for the smaller tree, it's going to have like two and a half inches of red on the gold on the other side and I can't wait to finish that one. Okay, so this basically done except for one thing. We have not closed the opening on the other side. And that's where I'm headed right now. It's the other side. <laughs> Yay. Just like this. And you can go along the hem or along the neck, the, the uh, trunk line, I'm going to say that right this time, and stitch it down. Um, you can put slip padding in there at, at the end like this, and then stitch that down if you like. Um, it's all how you want to make it your own design. So this makes this re reversible, which is wonderful. Now one thing that I am going to do with the one that has just the red on the back side is I'm going to make some little holiday appliques and put them on the red and that way when you turn it over it'll have like little figures or something. I haven't figured out exactly what I want to put in there but something of that nature. Now to close up the end like I said you can either use a button for your closure or you can just leave it and you can just make it regular. So I am folding back the green side because if you can see See, it was kind of at a weird angle, so you got half and half. Instead of one being actually exactly wider than the other. 
So I'm folding back the green to where it now makes a straight line, okay? Now I'm gonna do the same thing with the floral part, but I'm going to put the floral part over the green part so that I continue on with this kind of contrast um, look. So I'm gonna take this green part and I'm gonna tuck it under at the edge of the floral part Let's show you just a second. So that, I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna do it where you have actually pressed that down. So make sure you've got it you've got mail. down flush. And I'm gonna turn that under. Nice straight line all the way down. And then press it. Very carefully. Now, that's the green side pressed down. Take the flower, floral side or whichever side that has the trim on that back side and you're going to fold it in to the edge, to the edge of the, of the, of the, of the solid color, whatever on the bottom and fold that raw edge in and you're going to fold it one more time. But when you do, you want to make it an even space, uh, what we call it? measurement. <laughs> I keep doing. So, and I'm going to pin that. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. So it doesn't look like, like it's not real thin at the top and wide at the bottom. So it's actually the same width all the way down as if it were a real binding. And this is the side that you will lap over the other side when you're using the green as your top instead of the uh, green as the bottom. So what I'm doing is I'm making a half inch uh, overlap. And I've got, you know, extra tucked in under there, but only a half inch is showing. Just like, just like this. Oh. <laughs> It would be really good if you put the pin in the right direction and not in your hand. <laughs> I, I got, I got the, my glasses steamed up in a spot where I can't see out, out of it. So I'm like, oh no. Just like this. It's kind of like you're rolling it. You just kind of like roll it into that width of being, you know, a half inch. And then the, the bottom, you're going to have to kind of have to tuck it. Just a little bit. And that way you don't have like you know raw stuff, raw edges hanging out. Just like that. Then I can tuck that in to the other side. And then I'll show you this in just a second. So all I'm doing is rolling it under to where it's got a half where it looks like it's a half inch wide binding that was put on it. It's actually the top material just turned over on top of the back. So when I get it on the machine, I'll, I'll be adjusting it, you know, more narrow, but this is just to get it to where it's, you know, there, where I need it to be. And, ouch, here we go again. Now, if I want to do the drawstring, what I would do is take a scrap of the flower part and put it to the top, make a casing that way, and do a drawstring top. But here's what the back side's going to look like. So when you're using the green side, this is going to overlap over top of the other edge. And I'm going to move this ironing board out of the way just a little bit in the basket. I'm just going to go over here and this laid the can more here and we're going to finish this little guy up and da, 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 da. there we go all right
too. So I'm going to go fatter so I adjust it as I go. And then a good even half inch all the way down. Originally, I was going to put binding on it, you I don't have to. It's going to make its own. <laughs> and it did. I knew it was going to do it. I've done this before, and I was like, oh, so pretty. Such a pretty sight to see. And you come up and you have a solid, glittery print next to a floral, very cheerful print on the tree skirt like that. I just need to tuck that bottom in there. There you go. A little bit more. Alrighty. There we go. Is that? Yeah, one little spot here. Tack it down. At the bottom, it likes to get kind of poofy. I like it to be flat. I'm gonna tuck that right in there. And there we go. All right. Let's set this excess piece off. I guess I've covered up the scissors, haven't I? Yep, it is. <laughs> and. I'm going to press this just so it's not, it looks all kind of boobly. I'm going to do it on the right side. On the right side, it's even got some character now, and I wanted to show you that too. Because there are spots where they're a little bit different. Now, some people would say, that's uneven. That looks terrible. Oh, it doesn't. It's unique. <laughs> It's the thing about being creative. You can be as unique as you want. Take those pins out. Do I have any? Is there more? Yep. Like that one. And now, with it pressed, it lays nice and flat. You have this beautiful tree skirt. You don't need to put a button in it. These things can be just laying under the tree. And you lay it out under your tree just like this. Oops. Move that out of the way. Let go. Just like this. Look at that gorgeous, gorgeous Christmas tree skirt right there. Isn't that beautiful? I'm so glad I made a new one. I'm so glad it's somebody. He knows who he is. I uh, wanted to see one. And I really think I'm going to trim it in some red at some point. Not exactly sure how. It might be red fluffy lace. I don't know. But then the flip side, if I was going to want it to be a little bit more classic, as far as that goes, next year, maybe, I'm going to just do green and maybe put some little cutesy appliques on the green part. Little snowmen or snowflakes or something. And I can do it just like this. Just like that. And then, of course, they would fill in, you know, all the little gaps and stuff. I gotta press this again. <laughs> but isn't that gorgeous? You get green glitter, a little bit of floral on the edge and along the edge here. And then of course the main way with all these lovely, lovely pine cones and leaves and I think those are cranberries as a matter of fact. Well you guys this has been the Christmas tree skirt. That was asked about how to make one. This is the easiest Christmas tree skirt. And you don't have to worry about if you accidentally don't do the folds and cut it right. All you're going to do is end up with two pieces and you just stitch the two together where, where they would have been stitched together anyway. And But the cool thing about that is if you do come out with two, you get to leave one end open. So you're only doing one seam after all. This one you're not doing any seam except for to close the ends. I hope that you've enjoyed this. 
Um, if you were interested in any other variations of it, I'm going to go ahead and finish the one I got behind me because it's going to have a big, wide uh, red base on it. And it's got the, uh, the traditional Christmas red. And then I have this. This is the wrong side. The right side is beautiful. That's the right side. Shiny gold. I think they call that a... Uh, well, look, it's like a not a barbed wire, but it's a, it's a fence kind of uh, design, and you can make a Christmas tree skirt basically out of any kind of fabric you want. This is actually an upholstery fabric. It makes a great Christmas tree skirt, beautiful Christmas tree skirt. It gives it body, and it lasts a whole lot longer. Um, this is the red uh, felt. You can do velvet if you want. Some people like the velvet. I only like the velvet as a trim, <laughs> so I would make a velvet trim for something if I was going to. Um, this is a cotton blend. Um, the uh, reverse side, the green with the gold flex, that's a cotton blend also. Um, to, like I said, to give this more heft, and I may just do it, I could make it quilted if I wanted to. I could put batting in there and quilt this and make it kind of like the one you see in the store, but just leave it flat like this. Haven't decided if I have enough time to do something like that, I will do that and I will show you all how to do that on a sewing machine, how to do the free motion stitch. That's basically what quilting is. If you've enjoyed any of this video whatsoever, if it's got you wanting to make a Christmas tree skirt or now you have ideas of, of what you want to do and how to make one, please comment below, say like, hit that like button and say hi, just say hi and say, yeah, I'm going to make mine, uh, mine before Christmas. And it'll be awesome to see some pictures, you know, of, of what you guys do. Um, I don't know if y'all do any of the projects that I do on, on my videos. I would hope so, um, because I hope that I'm inspiring somebody <laughs> um, to, you know, get out of the comfort zone, get out, of the, get out of the box. And when I purposely cut two <laughs> circles, different sizes, and people thought it was a mistake. I was like, no, I did it on purpose. <laughs> and they'll see, because the same way... As with this one where you have that little bit of flower on the back side, this one's going to have a lot of red on the front. Yeah. Or actually, yeah, well, on the back. The gold's the back side, I guess. No, it's not. It's right at the top. So the top's going to have the red from the back. And when I stitch this, it'll have it. This is, you'll see this, and you'll see all of that all the way around. Look at that red against that gold. Look at this. It's like three inches. That's going to be gorgeous, isn't it? Then I'm going to take that red ribbon, a little skinny red ribbon, and it's going to go right along that seam, and I'm going to put some on the top next to the gold. I think that's going to be perfect for my little tree. The one I'm going to put on the table. The one we're going to put in the other room. <laughs> so get crazy with circles. This has been a circle day. We've got circles for Christmas tree skirts. You can make circles into your centerpiece placemats for your 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 glasses. Make coasters, you know, and they're washable. That's the best thing. Someone spills something on it, you just wash them. And what could be better than a circle? I mean, really. We have more circles in our lives than squares, don't we? Pretty much. I have really enjoyed the Christmas tree skirt. I knew I was going to have fun with it. I didn't know how much fun I was going to have with it. I hope you have too. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, say hey. I'd love to know what you guys are going to do for your holiday, uh, you know, kind of decorations and things. I have finally almost got this room decked out and I've got to get this sewing stuff out of this dining room like tonight. <laughs> I had it out and then I had to bring it back in because I forgot I needed the sewing machine here. <laughs> so, um... If this is something that brings you joy, just do it. It doesn't matter if it looks perfect, as long as you get joy from it. As long as it is a passion that you have and you have nothing else that you don't, that, 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 you, that, you, that you like better. I like to paint. I like to sew more. <laughs> I guess that's why I use So What and More as my business name. Hmm. Yeah, because I do a lot more than just on. But this lights me up. And if it lights you up, 
Tell me that. I would love to see someone say, I love sewing just like you. You're right. You can't have enough fabric. I, I want more. I have some. And I have some quilt kits also. But my contest this year, as I did mention it, and you had to watch the whole video to get all the skinny on it. From now, actually started November 15th. From November 15th until December 20th. At December 20th midnight is the cutoff. The task is, and the contest is, that I want the uh, individuals that who get to see my videos and watch them, pay attention and listen to what the contest rules are and actually know how to, that there is there's one going on. Last year, I gave away a sewing machine. As it was a vintage sewing machine. And this year, it's not a sewing machine. It has nothing to do with sewing. But if you sew to make some money on the side, it could be really handy. And that's all I'm going to tell you about it. I think that it's a worthwhile gift. I actually might be giving out two. Depends on what story I get. You're to tell about your very first sewing project and how it turned out. If it turned out horrible, I want to hear it. If it turned out great, I want to hear it. If it turned out, eh, not so sure, it wasn't that great, it was okay. <laughs> you know, but I want to know what you made. Did you have any pitfalls in it? Like, was there like stumbling blocks? And if so, did you overcome them or did you just throw your hands up and say, I give up? Mom, fix it for me. That kind of thing. I had a sister like that. She had a boyfriend. She did not know how to cook. She ended up marrying this guy. And she ran into my mother's house one day. And I was there and she had all this stuff in her hands. She says, Mom, I need you to make Swedish meatballs for Mike. Or Steve, excuse me, not Mike. Steve. And she goes, Swedish meatballs? for He's your boyfriend. She goes, I know, Mom, but I don't know how to make them. But you make them with like his favorite. Yeah, that kind of thing. So that would be that would be fun. And I promise, as always, it is anonymity. I will not share the story unless you say it's okay to. So when you submit your story, you can say that I can share. Um, I don't mention names unless you say it's okay to like, mention your first name. Um, like Cheryl or Jason or whatever. But I really am really excited about hearing the first sewing project that anybody did. And who was it that inspired you to do it? So there's there's several parts to this. So let's let's get to, get to the skinny in order. First, story about your first sewing project. Second, good or bad, doesn't matter. Third, what did you make or attempt to make? Fourth, did you ask someone to bail you out to finish it for you? And five. If you did finish it, were you happy with what you finished? And if so, why were you happy that you finished? You know, where, where's the, the pa you know, the passion part of it? That that's where that comes out. Like if there was something you that you just had to had to do, it. my first piece of clothing, and I know what it was, and I will never forget it because I was so proud when I finished with it. I make all these things reversible. You know? The very first thing that I made in clothing was a reversible vest. It had a floral print. It was like a gold and burgundy little flower print. And it was gold corduroy fabric. Corduroy fabric is not easy to work with, but it turned out wonderful. And I was very proud of myself when I made that corduroy vest. Well, it was a thing in the 70s. Everybody wore a vest. Most of them were fringes. <laughs> they built fringe things hanging on. I had one too. <laughs> that was Bobby Sherman's influence. I know I'm talking about someone you don't know who he is. Look him up. He's cute. Uh, or at least he was. So that's the context. Your first project. And I want to know all about it. And whether it turned out good, didn't. If you had to have someone bail you out. If you're in like crunch time or whatever. I want to hear the skinny on the first sewing project. Because I can tell you about mine. Because I'll never forget it. You never forget that first piece of clothing that you make and it fits you. It actually fits your body. And you think, wow, I really do know what I'm doing. <laughs>
it's like the epiphany of, I got this. And you will too. So find your joy. And if it's your passion, you know what you need to do, right? You just got to keep on sewing. That's what you're supposed to do when you have a gift. Go for it. Love you guys. God bless. Have a great weekend.